Well, hello there, friends. You're listening to Mastering the Task Exam with me, Mr. Abe Tasconi. Today's task science lesson is Genetics Today. Here's today's test tip for the task exam. Don't lose your motivation. Preparing for the task exam can be overwhelming sometimes. Try keeping yourself motivated by looking into the future. Set goals for yourself. Think about what you want to do once you obtain your high school equivalency, because you will obtain your high school equivalency. Do you want to learn a trade? Would you like to start your own business? The sky's the limit. Remember that, my friends. He's back. It's Mendel time. Now, if you're saying to yourself, who's this Mendel guy? You should probably go back and watch the lesson on reproduction and heredity. You see, it's because of Mendel and his systematic study in the field of genetics that scientists have been able to not only build on his initial findings, but also expand his studies in so many new areas. Thanks to the field of genetics, we have life-saving materials like insulin. We can genetically modify crops to make them more resilient with the goal of creating sources of food that can be grown in areas where there's famine. We can test to see if people carry certain genes that will predispose them to certain diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. We've even cloned a sheep. Well, hello there, Dolly. Genetics even found Waldo. Okay, just kidding. Genetics hasn't gotten that great yet. So back to business. So the first thing we need to talk about are chromosomes. Chromosomes are rod-shaped structures in the nucleus of cells. Now remember, the nucleus is the brain. It's where all the genetic material lies. The purpose of chromosomes is that they carry the genes from the parent to the offspring. And they look like this. So in regards to sexual reproduction, regular human cells have 46 chromosomes. Reproductive cells have 23. The mother's egg cell, which is called an ovum, has 23 chromosomes. Likewise, the father's sperm cell has 23 chromosomes. When the sperm cell unites with the egg cell, they join together to make 46 chromosomes. The resulting child is a genetic mix of both parents. Now each chromosome contains thousands of genes on a single long molecule shaped like a ladder also known as a double helix, called DNA. Each string of DNA contains sets of instructions, called genes. A gene tells a cell how to make a specific protein. Proteins are used by the cell to function properly. Cells would die if there were no proteins. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. The sides of the latter, also known as strands, are made up of deoxyribose, which is a sugar, and phosphate. The steps of the latter are called bases. In DNA, there are four bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Now bases have exclusive relationships. Adenine can only pair with thymine. Likewise, cytosine can only pair with guanine. To help you remember the pairings, A and T spell at. For C and G, think of CGI. You know, those special effects in movies. So I'm at the movies for some CGI action. Now, the order of bases forms a genetic code for making a specific protein. Specific proteins are arranged in three pairs called codons. All right, buckle up. It's time for the gist of protein synthesis. So instructions on how to make proteins are stored within the DNA, which is stored in the nucleus of a cell. Now DNA can't leave the nucleus, so the code in DNA must be translated. Part of the cell's DNA serves as a template 
to create an RNA molecule. This step is called transcription. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. RNA is single-stranded. The RNA copy of the genetic information contained in DNA is produced in the nucleus and is called messenger RNA, also known as mRNA. Messenger RNA acts as the messenger between DNA and protein production. Messenger RNA leaves the nucleus through little pores and enters the cell cytoplasm, which is that jelly-like substance inside a cell. Messenger RNA then travels through the cytoplasm, which you can think of like a road, to the cell's ribosome, which is like a factory. And that's where the protein can be made. Now it's time for the second part, translation. Translation takes place in the ribosome of a cell. The ribosome is made up of ribosomal RNA, also known as rRNA, and protein. The ribosome is the factory where the proteins will be made. The ribosome reads the message from messenger RNA and brings in transfer RNA, also known as tRNA. Transfer RNAs are carriers of amino acids, which are needed to build the protein. Transfer RNA brings in the appropriate amino acids to the ribosome, based on the message from messenger RNA. Transfer RNA is the delivery vehicle which collects and drops off the correct amino acids to the factory in the ribosome. And that, my friends, is protein synthesis in a nutshell. Four things to remember from today's lesson. Number one, messenger RNA carries the message on how to make proteins. Two, transfer RNA delivers the ingredients needed to make the proteins to the factory, also known as the ribosome which consists of ribosomal RNA and protein. Three, DNA makes RNA through a process called transcription. RNA makes protein through a process called translation. So DNA makes RNA makes protein. The fourth thing to remember is the most important thing. And you can never forget. You truly are brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Remember, click the link in the description box to take the Quizlet on today's lesson. Stay safe, friends, and keep on studying. I'd like to thank Chris Matthews for providing the music for this program, to Valerie Jeffers for co-producing, to Marion University and the Blue Umbrella for making this series possible, along with all the other teachers, townships, and adult basic education programs who help inspire adult learners to reach for the stars. Mr. Abe Tasconi is the alter ego of me, David Taylor. If you have any questions about the task exam or if you'd like to try some more of my quizzes, please email me at tasktestquestions at gmail.com. This has been a Jeffers and Taylor production. See you next time.